Good morning and welcome to uh, October's uh, Art for Breakfast. I'm Yoshi Kawamura, a founding member of uh, Asia Society Japan and uh, uh, a member of the Art Committee. Uh, today, uh, I'm proud to introduce uh, Etsu Egami to you, a Japanese artist who is the third generation of Japanese contemporary artists. She is born in Tokyo and uh, grew up in the US and Europe and is now living in Tokyo. She studied at Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing and the Karlsruhe University of the Arts and Design in Germany. Uh, growing up at the margin of different culture and languages, uh, of course, on the language barrier is always difficult to manage. Understanding each other is very difficult. Of course, and I even uh, don't understand uh, my wife's real intention properly and don't communicate with her. <laughs> anyway, so she is uh, uh, inter interested in the rethinking of society uh, through uh, language and uh, her work explores the uh, uh, barriers of communication th through uh, diverse media forms vocal recordings, videos, and paintings. So her creation is about the concept and the significance of communication. So let's turn to uh, Itsun. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Itsegami. And thank you for invitation by Asia Society. And thank you for a nice introduction and invitation by Kamura-san. He always supported me a lot. And this time, I want to share my process of my artwork and my background. And also, as the third generation post-war Japanese artist, I want to share the new generation of Japanese young artist new movement. Uh, I'm Etsegami, and I'm based in Tokyo and Beijing. And I was studied in Kafa, Beijing, and also studied at Germany. In 2019, I got Asian Art Prize finalist, and this year, I got Forbes Asia 30 and 30, and went to New York by dispatching by Culture Agency of Japan government. So this is my artwork, how it looks like. Maybe some person think it's a landscape, or sea, or maybe the face. So every person maybe have a different answer. Actually, this is what I want to say, and this is my concept. So about communication. So I want to visualize the process of miscommunication to explore what the essence of communication. So you can see the uh, big brush strokes in my painting. I use oil painting. So these brush strokes and the parallel lines and distortion, these elements drawing, there's no uh, outline, unclear uh, outline and unclear boundary of the portrait. So face is a symbol of communication. It has emotional and spiritual connections. So it is constantly changing. It comes from my long, long experience that led to this concept. So this painting also including about miscommunication that I felt and also I through communicate the sound I hear from the person and the face I saw. So let me share how I become this kind of art style and uh, what's the background of my uh, art history. So it is a closely connection with my background. So I was born in Japan, but I, uh, as Kamara-san said, I live in many countries like Paris or Washington DC. 
and the right photo is when I was a child. And after I graduated from Japanese high school, I went to Beijing Central Academy of Fine Arts. So besides study oil painting, I also uh, I hit the wall of the communication, the language. So it is very interesting that if you live in different country, because sometimes I thought the person already understand my language, but finally I, I found he didn't understand, or I thought he didn't understand, but it is luckily he understand. So it is very, very interesting um, things happen. For example, uh, there's many uh, very interesting story about my name, because in China and Japan, the most of calligraphy is same. So my name, Egami Etsu, the calligraphy is same. So one of my friends told, how to pronounce in Japanese? So I said, it's Egami Etsu. And they are laughing about my, my name. So I thought, well, why are they laughing about the pronunciation? And one of my classmates told me, it sounds like a cup of rice in Northeast dialogue in China. So I think, wow, it's so interesting. And maybe this is a key point to know the mystery of language or the exploring the communication. And I started the game called Mishearing Game. So I use uh, six years to hundreds of my friends in different countries to participate in my mishearing game. This game is, uh, I give them the sound they couldn't understand and how this sound sounds like in their language. So uh, from their conscious, consciousness and immediately to wrote down on the paper. So they are writing down. And um, I record the, the paper and record the photo. So it's a process of active mis mishearing and misunderstanding. And finally, i showing in Desas Beijing um, called This Is Not a Mishearing Game. So this is an interactive sound a video installation. So from the origin of language, I want to explore the human instinct and uh, the society built by language. And uh, I record their voices, and also at the same time, I'm drawing their faces. I want to, through my painting and my hand, to continue the communication with them. So this is my graduation works, including their voices you can hear and the portrait of them. So it goes uh, between sound wave and light wave, and it was collection by Kafa Museum. After I went to Germany to study art. And there's a many research project in Germany. And this is um, the left photo is we have research in hospital. And it is very interesting. There's many painting on the wall of the hospital. And they have an art therapy at the terminal care center. So I'm very curious about the art therapy and want to uh, experience and after this experience about our therapy in Germany, I feel how short the life it is. And um, because German is uh, insurance, um, insurance company is very st strong in Germany. So I thinking what's insurance company insuring for? And really think about the relationship between human and community or human and the society. So I made the works called Into the Light and have a solo exhibition in Germany. Uh, this is the work. And when I did solo show in Germany, uh, it was luckily that I was invited by curator in London, and uh, uh, she invited me to have solo show. And at the London solo show, I thinking why I show in London and researching about the history between Japan and uh, the United Kingdom, UK, and uh, I want to rethink really about the 400 years about from modernity to now times the history. So I did a solo show called Dialogue Beyond 400 Years. 
And when I was stay in uh, Europe, I got good news that I have a Chiba City New Artist Award. Um, and then I back to Japan, and I feel it, actually it is um, different um, image of Japan. So I want to face with my country, Japan, and my hometown, and myself, and rethink really about what's my identity. So I started to research um, the Kasori Kaizuka or the Inage Coast, and want to um, dialogue beyond times and space, um, doing my solo exhibition called Dialogue Beyond 4,000 Years. Then uh, I was invited by Chiba City Museum of Art. And not only painting um, and installation, I also do a participative project to connect with uh, local people. So uh, I do the acorn project. So acorn is a seed of a tree. And uh, um, I let them, the participation, to have a mishearing game and uh, ask some questions. So through their answer and the story they told, I draw the portrait of them on the clear box. I want to visualize the process. And I also let them to choose the air cones and roll their name and their message on the air cone. So the air cones, which may uh, grow someday, so it is a symbol of the conversation process and the memory that took place. And it also represents a new beginning for communication. And the left one is uh, Nanjo-san from Mori Museum and um, uh, the director of uh, uh, Chiba City Museum, Kawaii Sensei, in participate. And we also have an international talk at uh, Chiba City Museum of Art. We invite a uh, curator from Centre de Pompidou, Paris, and UCCA Beijing, and also Chiba Sensei. So uh, through this international talk, I want to share the words by Julie Champion, curator from Centre de Pompidou. Uh, she said about my works. She said, and what is beautiful in Etsegami works is that she sees all these specificities as a source not only of misunderstanding, but also of creation and richness in people's relationship. And after this, my overseas experience and my exploring about multimedia and installation, I want to back to my origin of starting point, the painting. And I got the new aspect, a new vision of a painting. So this is my turning point artwork called The Shape of Communication. So I'm using the oil painting and want to visualize the process of, of communication. So this work was shown last year at the Ueno Royal Museum at the Boca. And through my experiment and my exploring about communication, gradually the image of a rainbow came out. So the rainbow is pure and beautiful in every color, and each color shines and coexists, and also a symbol of dreams and hopes. So the rainbow is my perception of communication, and at the same time become my painting language. And this is my solo show in Taipei, uh, this generally called Rainbow. And we invite uh, Chen Kuang Yi from Taiwan Art University, the, the uh, director of Taiwan Art University. She said, the rainbow is a beautiful misunderstanding. And I also do uh, my solo show, Rainbow, in Karizawa New Museum. And these two works was collection by her art museum. 
and I did my social in New York called Facebook. And um, this is my solo show this August in Tokyo called Star Time. And this is my solo show in Paris, Social Distancing. And uh, as I said, I was dispatched by Culture Agency of Japan government, went to New York, and I also see many exhibitions, and also including Asian Society, Triennale, and that shows about Asian artists. And actually, that exhibition was the best show I saw in that time in New York. And also, they have a um, new museum, have a exhibition about black artists, so I feel the artists in New York, they're more focused on the minorities, including Asian artists or the black artists. And I was very lucky that um, when, when I had a solo exhibition in New York, I was invited by a Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. So uh, Christina Yuyu and Nancy Bellina and Anne Nishimura, uh, the curator also participated in my talk. And when they saw my painting, they said, oh, it is actually not like a superficial Japanese uh, art, art image. So it's a new Japanese art. So they said that it is global style and it's not a superficial uh, text of Japanese contemporary art and craft or decorative. So the brush stroke, like strong brush stroke seems like a Asian calligraphy, and also it connects to my concept about communication or rethink about Asian modernity. So uh, they said it is like a new Japanese art context appeared the never before. And at the New York, I have mm, meeting with um, many curator, and thank you for their support. Um, met the. Metropolitan Museum, John Carpenter Sang, and also MoMA uh, from MoMA, Sarah Suzuki, and the Samantha Friedman at uh, the here, and also Alexandra Mono uh, from Guggenheim Museum, and Alexis Lori. And through to conversation with them, uh, I feel that they are more. Uh, interesting about the not not like a male white artist, but also more like a woman artist or Asian black artist, like a uh, more diversity. So they want to create like an international art history, including more multiple layer and uh, multiple people and many countries. So uh, also they thought there is a new generation of artists coming. So the third generation is not only in Japan, but also it's an international art movement. So maybe uh, you think, what's the third generation contemporary artist? Um, I was invited by Pennsylvania State University to have an artist talk, and let me share some of the talk. So the first generation is uh, almost from 1950s to 1970s. So most of the artists uh, experienced like a World War II. So they ex experienced like a heavy human sad history. So their message in the painting or in our work also including very heavy topic like a human or oriental philosophy. So including Gutai or Monoha. But second generation, they are totally different. You can see the, you can, in first look, you can see, oh, it's, it's Japanese artwork. So um, they have a superficial symbolized Japanese elements and like a national characteristics. So you can see there's a manga or anime, otaku culture, like subculture, also including the painting. 
So Nara Yoshitomo or uh, Takashi Murakami, the super flat, they're including in second generation. But the third generation, actually they are not satisfied with the superficial symbolic for nationalities. So you can see maybe it looks like an international, maybe from Africa or maybe from different countries. So it's not like a superficial Japanese elements inside. So their artists already have an international background from, so they are from their own experience to directly to, to explore the humanity and more international commonality human themes. So they have a very international vision. And I, I want to share um, the words by Kawaii Masatomo Sensei from former director of Chiba City Museum of Art. He said, Miss Egami is now positioned as a third generation artist of post-war contemporary artists from uh, inside and outside of the country due to her artworks process. And these are my works. So the third generation is uh, not only a Japanese art movement, it's also an international movement that are just now growing. So now it is a turning point, and all people in the world is facing an unprecedented pandemic. And there is more focus on Asian women artists. So these minorities community, it is a time for the real meaning of diversity beyond the post-colonialism and symbolic or superficial nationality. So I want to contribute uh, as a representative third generation artist, as an Asian woman artist. And this is my future schedule. Uh, this week I have a Forbes Asia Study on the Study Summit and uh, um, Asia Now, Paris and Kiev. And uh, on December I have a solo show in Tang Contemporary Music, Tang Contemporary. And uh, uh, next year I have a Art Genève and on June, I will graduate from CAFA in PhD course. And thank you for invitation by Asian Society and very thank you for Kamara-san and thank you everyone for hearing my artist talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much uh, for a very uh, wonderful presentation. So please give her a big hand. And also, thank you very much for uh, coming uh, as a society to Japan uh, out for breakfast in your very, very busy and tight schedule. And uh, before uh, going to uh, Q&A ses Q &A session, uh, I would like to uh, ask a question to you directly from maybe one or two questions. Why you have uh, chosen rainbow as your painting rangish? Is there any hidden concept by using uh, Rainbow, because the rainbow is beautiful, peace, yeah. and, uh, but uh, easily disappears, you know. It's, mm. it's, it's like a understanding of each other. Yes. So, what do you think? Uh, thank you. It is a very nice question, because rainbow is my core concept now in my uh, artworks. So as Kamala-san said, rainbow is very, very beautiful, and it's also a symbol of hope or the dream, and... Uh, the rainbow is every color is very shine and bright and very pure, and not um, not uh, combine each other. They have just like a parallel line, so it it give me like a image of co what is coexistence and what is diversity in in real. So um, and also they has disappear suddenly and um, it's. It's give me like a like a beauty in mis miscommunication or like the essence of communication. So yes, there is no rainbow in my painting, but as an as um, my 
concept or my image of communication or my um, my core thoughts for my exploring. So yes, this is my key point for Rainbow. Thank you. And one more question. Uh, what is the characteristic of the third uh, generation of Japanese contemporary artists? Uh, what uh, do they need to do to uh, get the more attention or uh, recognition from the world art scene? Uh, thank you. Yes, the third generation is um, just growing now, and uh, um, the second generation have a superficial Japanese elements like a, a manga or a sub uh, animation. But actually, the third generation they already have an international background, so actually they are not satisfied with uh, the superficial elements of uh, nationalities. So they have a more the real meaning of more diversity and um, like a beyond like a post-colonialism of the like a directly image of the nationalities. So yes, so they are just growing and uh, I thinking for have a more attention, we need more support for audience and more support for uh, art lover to attention to new generations, so not only the famous artists, they are also very, very, very nice, but also uh, it is very helpful to, to, uh, to see the young generation of artists and to support them. And it will make the art history, because art history is always uh, made by the artists and like art lover or the museum we can um, make together, yes. Thank you. We have to buy more. <laughs> ne? Her work. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now uh, we'd like to move to the, uh, some questions uh, from the floor and online. I agree with you in your, um, uh, some, I think um, your view and your expression of second generation being superficial. In some ways it is, but in other ways it's not. And a lot of foreigners looking at second generation art mm. have a superficial view. And they don't understand that people like uh, Nara mm. were making a satire on Japanese society. So there is a deeper concept to not all of it. You know, sometimes Murakami switches back and forth between making a social statement and, and being more superficial. Mm. But uh, Nara definitely has a stronger, deeper concept. So. I don't <clears throat> agree that it's totally superficial second generation, but a lot, some of it can be. Um, and how, where do you see your art going now? You've moved on from the faces and, and uh, speakers to rainbow. How do you see yourself making still even, even stronger impact? Uh, thank you for your uh, question. Yes, I'm very um, agree with as uh, the generation of this is uh, just the the um, the second generation, and I think the the time for um, the the time also creates the the artist. So maybe so that time. That's right. Uh, yes, the Narasan and the Murakami san just growing, and now the time is totally different, and the international situation is also different. So, um, so I want to do as now as a young generation, or what can I do for now a time as my truly experience, also including COVID nineteen and this divided uh, international world. So, um, I want to continue my. Um, exploring about communication, uh, the process of miscommunication, and uh, yes, I I got the image of rainbow, but I think the image of like a brushstroke will be more stronger and stronger. And if you see my my paintings, and I I want to follow my heart to exploring, uh, continuing to do to, to and have a message to society. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a wonderful talk. 
and beautiful paintings. I am Sanjeev Sinha, uh, founding member of the Asia Society Japan. Uh, on the fun side, uh, uh, if we notice, uh, uh, lots of comedy is uh, based on uh, so-called mishearing, mm -hmm. and it's always uh, uh, fun. In, if someone, I mean, unless it's a very serious situation, it's fun to find someone mishearing, and we can even possibly. My friends accuse me of it a lot. They call me a creative hearer. So I want to hear what I want to hear uh, <laughs> or something funny, regardless of whatever they want to say. So what are your thoughts about that? And have you found any interesting, funny elements in your experimentation with mishearing? Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is the person is hearing, they want to hear is, yes, absolutely. And um, so I had a mishearing game project. It's very interesting um, because I gave some same question with everyone. And for example, I give to question the sound called uh, yada, um, yes, or uh, tsuama. So tsuama means uh, actually it is Chinese, uh, meaning about uh, did you eat before? So actually, this is a common, like a hello in English in, in China. And I give the question or give them the sound to Japanese, my friends, uh, how to sounds like in uh, Tsurama. So it is very interesting that um, some of them sounds like uh, Tsuranuma. <laughs> and I hear, oh, where did you born and uh, where did you live before? And most of them are from Chiba, Chiba Prefects. <laughs> so I think it's very interesting, like a miscommunication and uh, misalignment uh, also from their background, uh, maybe from what they're thinking or uh, how, how the background of them or uh, their family, or maybe from DNA, to uh, let them to to hearing from their unconsciousness. So it is also let me thinking, what's the communication or what's the origin of language? Yes, it is a very interesting story. Good morning. Thank you for your speech. Um, I understood that you, the third generation artists, are more like. Um, not just the Japanese movement, but it's Asian or international. But I was wondering if there is like a Japanese aspect to yourself. I remember um, in one of your slides, you uh, a mu um, museum curator explained you as a new Japanese art movement. And which what what factor is Japanese in your art? Mm. Yes, it is uh, interesting question, so what's Japanese artist and what's Japanese art? So um, I think it is changing in time to time and maybe um, some of them thought as like a more animation style or more uh, ukiyo-e style or maybe, uh, I th maybe different people have a different image of Japanese art. But um, yeah, they felt it is different from the Japanese work they saw before, and also I, um, in my experience, I have many friends of uh, young artists, and they uh, also have a different background. So um, sometimes I, I when when from from painting, I thought, oh, maybe she's from from United States, and after I met the artist, oh, it is totally different. Uh, she's from from Indonesia. Or so it is um, the background of the international background or um, yes, before COVID-19, I think many young artists are flight from country to country. So I think it is naturally reflect to the artworks or their painting, yes. But just growing, so yes, I hope to have a, have a main, like a, these kind of characteristics in such generation. Can you um, talk about um, you know some other third um, third generation artists that you work with? Uh, your peers. Ah, uh, 
another artist in third generation. Ah, yes. So, um, yes, the third generation, and I, I, I yes, um, there is a, ah, hi, I um, I, uh, in like a, um, Kato Izumi-san or Gokita-san also, I think it may be between second generation and third generation, and also like, uh, um, Kobayashi Erika-san, or uh, Yukimasa Ida-san, uh, Yukimasa Ida, and um, yes, I think, um, and Tomita, Tomita-san. Yes, I think many these young artists are including third generation. Okay, here's um, an online question from um, Daniel Nasan. Um, he says, um, your style is very unique but who's the artist that you've um, gotten most influence from? Uh, yes, um, let me think. Actually, uh, I studied uh, calligraphy when I was a child. So actually the rhythm of calligraphy or the, um, like a, the brush strokes of calligraphy, I, I very like the rhythm. And also, I like the painting in modern time of Japan, uh, yoga, and it including like uh, Umeda uh, Yasui Sotaro or Umehara Ryuzaburo. And these all painted in, in modern time, I like very much. And um, they also experience the traditional Japanese art to interrupt to study oil painting. And so that time of like modern oil painting, I feel like a crystal of um, combined with East and West and like a, um, their um, attack from Oriental, like a traditional Oriental to the Western um, new, uh, new culture. So I like these modern oil painting also. Here's another question from um, Hiromi Yokomori-san. Um, she says, what did you learn from um, have, getting your education in China, and why did you decide to go to China? Um, actually, I uh, spent my childhood in many countries, but I found um, i very fond of Asia country, um, because Japan and another Asian country are very close, but I thought I didn't understand in real. Or um, so when I was in high school in Japan, um, also there's a Beijing Olympic in 2008. So um, there's many art scene. Uh, the news of art scene in China is appeared. So um, it very attracted me because. It's totally different in Japanese contemporary and Chinese contemporary art. And I want to, and most of the Chinese contemporary artists at that time, they're using oil painting to um, have attention in internationally. So it also led me thinking, what's the meaning for uh, using oil painting in Asian artists? So I decided to go to uh, Beijing, the Kafa. We have a lot of collectors here um, on site um, at iHouse. Um, what do you think are the differences between, let's say, Chinese or international collectors and Japanese collectors from your experience? Mm, it's a very <laughs> interesting question. I think I need to ask a camera. <laughs> Artist. As an artist, okay. Um, um, uh, in before I filled um, Japanese artists, uh, more like a small size of works when you when they collections, and maybe uh, collector in in China or in U.S. in America, they want the big works to collect, and. Um, I think Chi also Chinese collector they they have many questions to 
artists. So when they collection before, they will ask many how, what's your uh, thinking and how to become this painting, and also um, American collector they they really thought uh, what's your concept and and um, and how they they will um, thinking uh, they thought as a Japanese artist uh, what's the relationship between the Japanese artists before and how what's your opinion. And I think Japanese artists is uh, a Japanese collector. They um, they are more quiet. I think <laughs> they are more um, um, they can feel in in heart, heart to heart. Like a, uh, yes, but actually now um, the young collector in in Japan they are, like to the collection the big work. I think maybe the the equipment for a collector. Like a, have a big, um, uh, how to say, um, stock room in in Japan are built in Tokyo. So yes, it's changing now. Actually, mm. this is actually a, a question from myself. Um, you're probably the one of the um, only person in this room or um, online that actually has seen the Age of Society's Triennale that just closed. Um, can you tell us about, you know, your thoughts? Um, there was a lot of, um, obviously, there was a lot of work putting into um, the Triennale last year. It was supposed to be, you know, held all over New York, but it was only held um, at the H Society Museum. But can you tell us your impressions and what you thought of that? Oh, hi. Yes, I saw the Asian Society Triennale in, in New York in, when I was staying in New York. So uh, it is my first time to uh, visit the uh, Asian Society in New York. And I remember the title of the tri Triennale is um, uh, We Are Not Dream Alone, I thought. So um, this title also very uh, catch my heart and also I think inflects the the, the society, like um, also in background of uh, Black Lives Matter or Asian hate at time. So um, when when I see the exhibition, and there is many um, um, many sculptured and um, uh, yes, this is a sculpture and from like a Chinese artist and also. It is very um, conceptual exhibition. I, I feel in and every every artwork have a message, and not like a, a visually, but also from their installation or their um, um, the disp display for exhibition. I feel there is a, a very strong message as an Asian artist and. Um, it is luckily that I met Michelle from Asian Society, and uh, she introduced me. Uh, they have very long um, prepare for the exhibition. So um, maybe another another museum, the most like a, um, just have a, like a visually it is very bright or very beautiful. But I I thought the Asian Society Triennale it give me thinking to um, what's the mission for Asian artists or how, what can I do as an Asian artist? It also let me think in my identity. So it, um, yes, um, give me many thinking, yes. And they have a very good archive. In, in first floor, they have a, a beautiful bookstore and li library, so I think it is most um, diversity Asian art archive in in that place. So it is very good for research. Thank you for your um, presentation. I was wondering, uh, despite your your young age, you've done really well for yourself and have had a quite a savvy career as you you stepped. Um, I wonder if you are thinking about or planning on how do you maintain your 
your innocence and purity as an artist, because it's quite easy to get caught up in the art world, collector's world, dealers. And next thing you know... <laughs> are you a um, dealer? <laughs> I'm not. Okay. But uh, sort of as, as, as a creative person, I think that's an easy one to get caught up in and then lose your innocence and you know you have a long way ahead of you are you thinking about how to maintain your purity and innocence that then is the sort of source of great art fundamentally uh yes <laughs> mm. yes because i think artists is actually very alone in in when you create the work and for me, it is uh, because I I will do my our work in my studio and not with assistant, just by myself. So when I was creating new works or painting, it is uh, a process of uh, like a very long, long, lonely process. And um, I want to like a, just scheduling my. Um, the time for creating artwork is most important for me. So although they have a, a meeting with curator or uh, have a meeting with museum uh, or gallery, um, in, in my art uh, daily life, I just have a, in the percentage is very, very small. And most of them I like the traveling or um, researching or painting, so yes, um, in through this time for exploring and um, painting, I think uh, it's back to my origin of why I, why am I become artist? Or um, I very like uh, Japanese words, like shoshin, uh, shoshin ni monoru ka. Yes, every time, and I wrote my Daily book, daily note, Nikki, this a diary uh, every day. So when I uh, thought, oh, it is um, different. So I, I wrote my diary before I wrote two years ago and three years ago, and um, and yes, I start to uh, creating the works. Thank you for your speech. Such a good speech, speech like your artworks. And then, this is a little bit private question, but uh, inspiration is very important thing for the artist. So, what is your habit when you want to boom up your inspiration before you creating your artworks? Ah, so this inspiration um, comes in different different time, different places in every time. For example, reading book, or when I. Uh, talk with my friend or the, the the stranger I met in foreign countries. Every time I got inspiration, but I, every time is from my real experience. Um, so yes, and also like I talk with a, a researcher in 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 university or uh, in the research center. So yes, different. In um, sometimes met with people, or sometimes reading book, or just walking in in the park, I got uh, maybe uh, this is what I can do. Yes, so I think every every place could be the inspiration place. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about your creative process. I just wanted to ask, like, so you said you get inspiration, and then how? Uh, how much of what you're going to create have you already visualized before you start painting and how much is is actually responding to what you put on the canvas or paper already? Uh, yeah, that's my question. Oh. Actually, I didn't count it how many works I painted on how many works I, I do, I did. Um, yes, when I was in Germany, I before I did my um, 
installation. Actually, I did my many drawing, like a researching and interview the people working in hospital, or like um, mm, this. This is not Miss Hearing Game. Also, I uh, let many person to participate in my project. So it is a long process actually, and also about my painting. And um, I actually to become to to drawing on cam before drawing on canvas I I do the many drawing on the paper or the different materials like uh, through my uh, movement of hand or I I want to like more deeper to this person or more closely to the person so. Um, Yes, maybe before the canvas work, I, I do like a 20 or 30, it depends on the painting, but I, through the, the process of drawing many, many works, many on, on every works, I can feel, oh, maybe oh, this, I can have a, this is what I want to draw. And when I, I feel that, I drawing on canvas. So it is long, long process. Yes. But so, so you have already thought through what the final work will look like uh, before oh. you start, or is the final work after you do the thirty drawings and then you go on the canvas? Let's say, does the final? Did you already know what the final work would look like when you started the canvas, or does it change depending on? What's actually there on the canvas? Uh, it is changing, and uh, when when I draw on canvas, maybe I change the color or uh, through the process. Yeah. Hi, I have a question on so on, on this concept of third generation artist. So that was that for very long, as you could kind of infer where the artist was coming from, whether you know it was an American artist or someone from Europe or from Asia. Even like Nara and uh, Murakami are immediately Japanese, uh, you can recognize them as Japanese artists, as you say, because they refer a lot to the Japanese culture. And that's true that now, uh, more and more artists, like you do, uh, have traveled extensively, have, are working uh, in different countries, so you're kind of rotating around different cultures. Uh, as you are mentioning, it's you know you thought uh, you mentioned your uh, your friend and you thought it was an American artist and actually it was someone from Indonesia, and so there is something like very international in this kind of third generation, mm -hmm. and and because the art world kind of writes his own story in real time, where do you think that leaves artists that are more how do you say they're more like. Uh, representing some traditional aspect of their culture. But do you think it still have a, Do you think that artists that represent more like the Japanese culture or the American culture or African culture, do you think they could have a space into this like top tier third generation artist, or do they think that inevitably they will be more like categorized as ethnic artists, so to speak? Oh. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, yes, I thought the third generation, they don't have a superficial symbolic of nationalities, but in, in deeper side, they, um, when you see and when the creator um, research about the works, they also can see some, the part of, if, if you're Japanese artist, they are Japanese, some elements or in their deeper side of the art, art painting or artworks. So um, also the curator from Boston, they thought it like a calligraphy, Asian calligraphy. So um, I think it, the third generation is, in the first look, it is not like a, um, like a tax of Japanese contemporary art, but it is, actually uh, also including the, the elements of Japanese uh, in deeper side, I think. And um, yes, there is also many traditional um, 
uh, traditional artists in in Japan. And um, when I met with uh, uh, friends doing craft or a koge or doing a nihonga, or also I met my friends in doing like a, a Chinese traditional painting. They also um, using very traditional material to, um, but they also want to beyond the traditional um, their art history to doing some new new vision. So yes, I think also including. Um, some Jap some traditional artists in in our generation, but uh, as I said, it's uh, in in more uh, how to say um, more uh, abstract and a big big vision, and we can see uh, this kind of characteristic in the every generation. Thank you. Thanks for great talk. Um, <clears throat> I have a question about the impact of technology. On, on your your creativity, or perhaps third generation artists' creativity, unlike the previous generations, uh, the technology advancement is huge. Uh, not only on you know sort of uh, information exchange, actually down to the actual pieces of digitized art mm -hmm. is now flourishing, which is quite different from what you uh, what I understand that you're working on. Um, but uh, how do you see that's impacting your uh, work today, mm -hmm. and where do you think it's going to go from here? Uh, yes, yes. The technology is um, influence my also give some inspiration in my artworks. Uh, for example, under COVID nineteen, I think it's the last year. The beginning of COVID nineteen happened, and I remember there's many uh, fake news in in Twitter or in social media, and. Uh, the news is including uh, what's COVID-19 or there are different opinion and totally it's a fake news. But in when when we um, met with this, we the the um, pandemic we couldn't we didn't know before. We don't know uh, which is a true or which is a fake. So I saw many news that uh, we have to do the attention to these fake news. And um, actually, uh, some the message my friend sent to me. And I I thought she is uh, as kindly to send this message to me. But actually, some some of the information is not correct. So um, I gradually thought, uh, what's the uh, correct? Uh, communication, like uh, also information, is a very important process of communication. And through this uh, process of, like uh, SNS is also person to person. We we share every day and share in with different countries people. And as a, like a butterfly uh, reflection, it the small things become ev totally different things happen. So. So through this process, it is changing. So also let me thinking, it's a French philosopher called Derrida. Yes, and Derrida said everything is changing. And he, he also um, said the concept of difference. He, he also uh, said there is no truth in the world. Everything is changing. Space and time is changing. Um, but for me, uh, Derrida's Philosophy also influenced me a lot, and like a post, um, and um, like post construction philosophy. And um, but as an artist, I want I th thought there is a new meaning of truth in in the world. So I want to explore what's the essence and what's the truth, and uh, uh, what's the real meaning of the. Uh, transformation in, in information or communication. Yes, the technology gives me many inspiration. I'm wondering if which, uh, what your uh, future artworks would be. You're going to challenge sculpture or you know, digital arts or maybe uh, change your drawing style and structure and the pen and colors or whatever. Hi. Yes, um, I. 
because through my painting, for me, it's not like a two dimension. Actually, it is more, uh, although it is a painting on canvas, but it's more like a three dimension for me. So I tr want to try in, in sculpture, and also I want to use the new technology. Um, like uh, now, there is a, like a three D printer, and uh, using um, through like a digital world to. Um, explore the more deeper mm, yes I want to use and I uh, in my exhibition next month in Kafa Museum I also want to use like a, um, this is installation work using the um, a video and using like a, the mirror to it is a, a new new technology and um, using a reflex of light to doing uh, the work. So yeah, I want to um, break, break through my uh, now style and also want to more doing more deeper and deeper. I'm going to close today's session. And again, thank you very much, uh, Essa, and let's have a big, uh, a big applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>